I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we get into one of the most questionable mods that I've ever played with. That's right, we're diving in to Mahot Sky Mod. So today is World Download Day, so if you're a supporter of any tier, be sure to hop on over to the Discord and get your World Download. Whether you're a supporter on Twitch with a Twitch Prime, or you're a supporter here on YouTube, or you're a Patreon or a Discord Premium member, you get access to this world. So be sure to download it if you haven't already. And well, let's get on with today's episode. Ah, resource generation, yes. We've already got the majority of our resource generation set up, or at least the foundation for it and the production of our seeds. But we're gonna need way more than this moving forward. There's going to be thousands of items that are going to need to be basically processed in this way or many, using many other different ways. But the mystical agriculture we already have set up, so might as well use it. Now, there's gonna be several items required for the All the Mod Star. So as we look at this massive thing, that is the All the Mod Star right here, we are going to have to think about these items down here the most, I think. Um, and we want to sort of have these being produced while we work on everything else in this star, because these are going to, in my opinion, I think take the longest. So for example, six times compressed dirt is nearly 5 million individual dirt. And that's, that's doable with, uh, with farms and many things that we have already set up, but we're gonna have to really focus on these few items. And thankfully they give us a list of everything that we need to really focus on. Um, and so that's the things we're going to need to set up. For example, like obsidian seeds, netherrack seeds, dirt seeds, instone seeds, all of these things are going to really need to be a focus. And I think I'm going to put it in this crop right here. Now, this leads me into some other seeds that we also need to think about. And that is unobtainium, vibranium, and all the modium. However, these are a little bit more sneaky as these are the magical tier. And to use them, we need their crux uh, in this case which is magical soil. Now this needs to go underneath the crop, just like all of the other cruxes. And you'll notice here that this requires dragon scales. Dragon scales, from what I've seen, there's no way to make them. So we have to physically kill the dragon. Um, and to kill the dragon can be kind of tedious to do it over and over again. I honestly think the hardest part is just waiting for it to spawn. But thankfully we get like six or so each time we kill the dragon but I want to make that process a little bit faster. And there's a mod in here that we should be able to use to do this. And that is the Mahot Sky mod, which is going to allow me to essentially make a sword that can deal thousands of damage. Now, I know we have a really powerful sword now, which could probably do in the dragon quite quickly, but with this Morgan sword, oh boy, the possibilities of potentially one-shotting the dragon are there. Now, to get into this mod, well, you're going to have to craft this book. And I will say the compendium is something. It's definitely something. It's a lot of just text. It's it's really not. It's yeah, it's something else. A lot of reading, lots of you know what? Just just follow along with what I'm going to show you today, because this mod can be quite confusing. And the reason is, is simply because of this book, there is a lot of things to learn and it's not really categorized very well, in my opinion, on this book, unfortunately. I really wish there was a quest line specifically associated with this mod. That'd be pretty cool, but there isn't. So we are going to have to sort of write our own path to magic. Yeah, because this mod is all about sorcery and well, becoming a wizard. Now in this mod to get started, one of the first things you're gonna to want to make is a dagger. And the dagger is going to allow us to, well, hurt ourselves a little bit. So once we've hurt ourselves, we have a little bit of time to be able to cast a projection on the ground in our blood, which seems kind of weird, but we can definitely do it. It allows us to make a blood circle on the ground once we have hurt ourselves. Now you are gonna have to assign that hotkey uh, from this mod inside of your hotkeys. So definitely need to get that set up because you're gonna be making quite a few of these. Now, once we have this made, you're gonna see in the top left, we now have this sort of mana bar. Um, and uh, yes, this is our magic bar, basically. I'm pretty sure that word, uh, maho, maho, translates into mana or magic. Um, so this right here, is uh is how we're going to build a lot of the stuff in this mod. The thing to know with this mod, the more of the magic you use, the more you will gain over time, and it references it similar to exercising, right? You gotta get them gains. 
Now, inside the book, I'm pretty sure this is going to be one of my most used quote unquote spells that we're going to be able to, to create, which is the boundary of life drain. This will use our mana, but it will also take health, hunger, and also mana from the mobs and will give it back to us. Now, it does cost mana to use this, but we should be able to set up enough of these to keep our gains coming. And this should passively over time also improve our overall mana stat. But this is going to really come in handy when we start to work with a very special sword. Now, to be able to get this sword, we are going to need 5,000 mana. So we can actually craft this entombed emerald right here. And it's very cheap to make. And over time, this right here is going to allow us to store some of our mana. And so uh, we're just going to continue to build this up, but we are going to need to use this in combination. Well, I say this, but we're going to need to use a very specific spell in combination in order to create this sword that I ultimately want to make, which is going to be the Morgan Sword. That's right. The Morgan Sword is a very corrupt sword, uh, and you have to sacrifice a little bit of your humanity in order to obtain this thing. Now, it also requires a little bit of time and work to get this set up as I'm going to need a villager farm. That's right, I'm gonna be spawning in villagers, but not just any villagers, uh, baby villagers. Uh, don't question it. Okay, maybe you can question it just a little bit, all right. But the baby villagers are going to be key to us improving the overall damage of this Morgan sword. Uh, it's gonna be worth it. It's all about trusting the process. I'm just going to need to do this, boop. <laughs> and now we have a villager swab. And you know what? I'm just going to leave you hanging there. These chickens have got to be getting tired of me at this point. Oh boy. Happy birthday, yep. So now we have a villager spawn egg. And this thing is going to be incredibly important to this Morgan sword. So over here, I've actually set up another spawner pretty much identical to this room over here. And so we now have it ready to go. All I have to do is basically tell this how far up that I want this placed. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a couple of these cog blocks and let's place them right here. And then I'm going to drop the spawner in and I'm gonna hit it with a comparator as quick as I can because this is actually the Vindicator from the other dimension. And uh, this spawner is going to be very powerful, uh, I think, in, uh, in, in spawning. So just its default settings alone is going to be pretty fast. Now I want to use these cog blocks up here and I want to set them up to a lever so that way I can turn this on and off as needed. Um, and I don't, I don't think I want this running uh, unless I'm right nearby it as of right now. That will change, but for right now, I want this, let's go ahead and place this here. Oh, it's incredibly dark. Um, I want this to only run right now whenever I'm over here. So let's make sure this leads all the way out and just like that. And then I should be able to put a lever here and now we have redstone control, right? So if I turn this on, it's on. I flip this lever, it's now off. Perfect. Now we just need to turn this into a villager spawner. So there we go. So now this is spawning villagers, but I think I want to spawn in baby villagers. Now in order to turn it into baby villagers, well, we're gonna need turtle eggs to do this. Turtle eggs allow us to give it the youthful and well, we have to go through the normal process of getting turtle eggs. Doesn't really seem like there's any other way to do it. We do need to grab some kelp. So now we have some kelp and now we just have to find some turtles. But for locating a beach, we now have everything we need. We just gotta get these guys, well, to mingle a little bit. <laughs> Give me some turtle eggs. I would really, really like that right now. Um. So yeah, we have our iron repair. We need to silk touch these, I believe to be able to get them. And so we just have to kind of wait for it to do its thing. Oh boy. That is a lot of particles. You know, the more I watch this, the more I'm like, this is such an odd mechanic that was added into regular Minecraft. What an odd mechanic. Ah, there we go. So after a moment, it managed to lay some eggs. Now scoot over, give them here, give them here, get out of the way. Oh, it only laid, did it lay just one? It just laid one. Well, that's the one we need. So there we go. We now have the one turtle leg that we're going to need probably through the entire playthrough. So all we have to do is simply add this to it. And now our stats should say that it's going to have youthful and it should just spawn. Once we give a lever to this over here, I don't think with this one, we're going to need any like means of 
popping in here because this is not going to be tall enough. So this should work. As soon as we flip the lever on, we should get some villagers spawning in here. So long as we're nearby. Um, I also, I don't know if we, yeah, I don't know if we need to make it avoid light. And, but there we go. We have baby villagers that are now spawning down here. Um, so how are we going to use these baby villagers at first? Well, I think what we need to do is uh, we need to take some of that uh, that spell that I mentioned. And well, the magic spell here, we're going to need to generate that. But we're going to need to do it over here. And that should hopefully consume and also generate our magic or mana up over time. Now, to be able to make the powders for this, we actually need a mortar and a pestle from this mod, which does require diamond in order to make. Um, but this is going to allow us to, for example, make iron powder. So we can make this. And then in our book, we're making the boundary of drain life. So we're also going to need powdered emerald. And that's all it really needs from the looks of it. So powdered emerald as well. There we go. And whenever we cast this, we need to do the whole thing where we kind of do this sort of like dagger strike and then use our hotkey and we should be able to place it where we're looking. If it lets me, <laughs> it could be because of uh, where we're at. Let's go ahead and try it right here. And I'm trying. Do we need an empty hand? It might be a little hard to get this these to place sometimes. I even remember this from prior. Uh, let's go ahead and try adding some blocks to the front of these and see if we can get this to work. Okay, let's try again. And there we go. So yes, it needs to be placed like sort of on the block next to you. So I'll do that again. And there we have another one. Boop. And doesn't let you place here. So I do need to place it on the block. And there we go. So now we have all of these circles. Um, and we should be able to now set the spell on there. So it's going to be clicking this powder. One, two, and then clicking this emerald on here. And now this is the boundary of life, of drain life. Same with this one. And these should work up to 10 blocks. So all of them are set to boundary of life. And I think we right click on them to activate them. Yeah, it's just as bad as you think it is. So notice they are draining health, right? The health is draining. Let's go ahead and turn this back on real quick. And we'll notice they should spawn in here, but we should notice our health rapidly increase or our mana rapidly increasing. So this just over time should help increase and use at the same time is going to be pretty helpful for that whole situation. Now, I will say this, they don't have to be babies at this point, but this is going to help us in the future. Now, you know what? I actually want this to be constantly running. So this is going to mean we're going to need to make a couple more seeds, but this is going to require the soul extractor. So let me show you that. So in order to be able to make conduits, which allow this right here to constantly run without us being nearby, all we need to do is make a soul extractor, and then we can use the soul extractor to feed it materials that can then allow us to craft up seeds of particular mob types. Now, really, the only mobs we need are squid, which will be pretty easy to get. So squid and also fish. Well, cod to be more specific. Now for this, we're going to need some solium ore, and we get that from these solium veins here, or the soulstone veins. And uh, yeah, we're going to need a little bit of it. And then we just need to craft up a couple of solium daggers. Pretty straightforward as far as this goes. Now, this machine is actually kind of cool and seems like it has changed a little bit over the years, which is really, really nice. We should be able to take, for example, cod. Um, I don't have a lot of it yet, but we should be able to farm up more of it. But if I take one of the soul jars, I can put it inside here and we can feed it this material. Now, I'm, I'm depending on the upgrade that you have inside the machine will depend on how fast this processes. So, yes, we need to fill up four jars of cod. And that's going to take a little bit of time. You know what? It might not be too bad as we can get quite a bit of cod from these guys. Shoot, might as well even make a data model for them. So now we're getting a little bit of cod via this. And uh, that's going to hopefully get us our cod that we're going to need in our soul jar. Uh, while that's being processed, let's go ahead and work on our squid ink as well. So yeah, this shouldn't be too difficult. Oh my goodness, by the way, <laughs> once you've upgraded this to the premium version... Look how quickly it fills the jar. That is so much better. I wonder if it does. It, is it using less of the resources as well? 
I have no idea. It's It's got to be using less, right? Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. It does require for some of these things, like, yeah, it's going to require more than a stack. So when you're setting these up, by the way, they do require the solium seed base in order to be produced, um, which is kind of cool. So with that little side quest done, we can now actually get this up and rolling and get it rolling automatically. So all we got to do to be able to make this up and run is a conduit. And so we should be able to craft all of the Nautilus shells that we're going to need for the conduit like that. And then we can even craft hearts of the seas. And so we should be left with the ability to just craft a conduit. And that is all this needs in order to run without me nearby. And so that is going to make this a lot more effective. And so now all I have to do is turn these back on and you can turn them off by the way, by right clicking on them. But there we go. And so now we just need to work on other things while we let this process. Now at this point, I think it's time for us to make, well, a very special sword, uh, the Caliburn. So the Caliburn is going to require a sort of space um, that it is going to kind of create this pool. I don't want to do it right near the base. I kind of want it directly away from it. I think it will also generate its own sort of structure. Um, so it will automatically, I think, clear out the land and everything for this. So we don't have to worry about anything other than the fact that we need to place this spell. So this is going to be the power consolidation spell. And uh, to be able to get this, we have to do the same thing where we do the dagger. And then uh, right where we put it is probably gonna be where the center's at. So let's go ahead and do this. Perfect. So now we have our spell. This is going to be two diamond and then an emerald. And that's the power consolidation. And you see it is already working. And yes, this is what we need to do with it. Now, we also need stored up 5,000 mana to do this. So, yes, this does have a very powerful, like, sort of um, fog effect that happens in this area. That's why I didn't really want this uh, right where my base is at. Um, but all we have to do is take an enchanted sword. It says preferably smited, or per preferably has a holy enchant, aka smite. And you just toss it in, and it'll use up that mana. And we go down here and we should be able to locate it. And this is the Caliburn. Now, this is not the sword that I absolutely want. And you can increase this more and more, um, the damage that it does. It has some pretty cool effects that it can do, but I wanna turn this into the Morgan sword, which in my opinion is one of the most powerful swords in the pack. Now, the book describes the conversion in this way. Well, Today, we actually get to save our dear friend, and we'll go ahead and tame you, but I do not have to sacrifice you. Even though the book tells me to, we actually don't have to. Instead, to be able to convert this, we need to kill the warden with it. And you know what? I honestly prefer that better, because I wouldn't want to kill my little friend here. <laughs> also, what should we name our newfound friend? You should let me know in the comments. Now, it is time to take on the Warden. These guys were already spawned here, so this should not be too bad. There we go. This is just the base damage from this. They do absolutely nothing to me. But this should convert this into the Morgan. Now this is the sword. This is where, where dreams are made of, honestly. It is a very dark sword, though. Like, just the idea around having this sword is pretty dark and nefarious, but it is going to make life so much nicer. Now, just because we got it via the Warden, and by the way, we now have taken on the Warden, which opens up a new dimension, um, we now have to do something that's probably even more nefarious than taking down our most loyal pet. Well, we now have to take on baby villagers. And that's right, um, each time we technically hurt or kill some baby villagers with this, you'll notice it says how, <laughs> this is, have you eaten in your life? So um, each time we do this, we'll notice the attack damage is 11.6. Now it is 12.6. And when we do it again, 13.6. And so it keeps going up. However, it does cost each time you do this, each time you take these on, it does cost some of your mana. 
So you are going to have to build up mana in order to successfully raise the level of this. But we're already at 23, 24. So yes, this only goes up from there. So the faster we can get this to spawn, the more damage overall the Morgan Sword can have. Now, this does say it has an innate cap of 100, and I'm not quite sure what that actually means. Um, so does that mean that we can only go up to 100 damage? If so, then that's fine. That is better than this sword, but still is going to pose a little bit of a problem. I was hoping that we could get it even higher because that was the kind of fun of this, but maybe that's just what has happened in the update. Now, I believe each time you kill one of these things, it does cost 500 of your mana. So we'll notice when I do take one of these down, the number has dropped. It may be 400. It's somewhere close to the 500 range, um, if not actually 500. I mean, I'm also noticing the durability seems to go up. It, it's at 99. I'm pretty sure it should. It shouldn't be going up, but it, it apparently is. Interesting. Yeah, there it goes. Complete challenge? <laughs> Just, I don't know, kill 50 villagers. Oh boy. But yes, this is this doesn't even have enchants on it yet, and we're already at 30 attack damage. This is quite noisy, but I have upgraded. I went ahead and also added the other Vindicator that I had to just add to more of our production of mana. So it does speed things up. So I'm already at 61 attack damage. If I can just get this up to 100, I would be more than happy. This surprisingly took way less time than I thought, as this is honestly already at 95. And this also, by the way, this sword has a really cool ability. You can sort of like AOE most of the mobs just by swiping in the air. So that is another kind of crazy AOE thing that it can do. Look at this, 98, so we're almost there. Almost there, 99.6, so the next one that we have enough for, there we go. Now it's 100, so this does go higher than 100. We, it just depends on how much time you want to spend on this and doing it. Oh, this is just, this is too powerful way too powerful so right now it's at 101 damage and i'm sure if we just continue to let this build up yeah this is going to be more than ridiculous it is at 101 i don't know if uh it's going up anymore it doesn't really seem like it is unless maybe you need more mana potentially yeah no it's stuck at 101 damage exactly very interesting i'm actually going to turn this off even though if I leave the villagers running, if I left this whole thing running, technically, um, this would be actually pretty nice because it keeps us sort of always full. Um, I do want to, I, I technically, I do want to leave this on. I, you know what? Let's actually leave it on. Let's leave it on. It isn't hurting anything. And this is honestly going to make us sort of like godlike, right? Because uh, it's going to constantly keep us fed, which is kind of crazy. And it not only keeps us fed, but while this is running, it's going to constantly be building up our mana over time. So letting it run is not a big deal. And we could technically void everything in here if we really wanted to. So let's go ahead and set this up to make sure it's voiding just about everything that builds up in here. And we should be good to just let it run while we do other things. Oh no, I started a raid. I don't even know how. Uh, is the raid in there or something? I don't even know how we managed to do that. Yep, looks like I'm going to be dealing with a raid or I'm going to have this message above my head forever. Oh boy. Now here's a demonstration of the power of this, right? We just need to right click near the mob and just by simply right clicking near the mob, it will automatically attack it. It's that powerful. It, it, what, a, what a crazy, crazy weapon. Now I just done all of the hard work that is God forging this and then setting up the enchants and there's so much that it doesn't even display on the screen. However, if I go into the video settings, I can make this a little bit smaller so we can see everything that's on here. So this thing right here, I went ahead and set it up to do life mending because for some reason regular mending doesn't work. But the thing to keep in mind is we have Vorpal 5 on here. And so Vorpal is an insane enchant. Um, so that's going to take the current damage that we have 
I don't know why, by the way, this one has an innate cap of 100 when I'm seeing uh, the other one that you look up inside of here shows an innate cap of 10,000. So maybe there's some other steps that I need to do. You can let me know down in the comments below because I'm very unfamiliar with this new current version. But right here, we also have some sharpness, which brings up the attack damage and the attack speed is also increased. So the main goal that we had in mind for this particular sword was so that way we can take out the dragon quickly. Will we be able to do that? Well, the whole goal of today was to be able to get the Aldemodium seed set up and to get multiple set up so that way we have an abundant supply of those things. And well, it's time to fight some dragons. So let's see if placing them right here will get this to spawn the dragon. I don't know, but this looks like it would be the place where you would want to set them up to summon the dragon. Aha, it is. So you can place them right there and it's probably going to regenerate this whole structure. Oh boy. Yeah, and I don't even think we're going to have to take out these towers. We might be able to take on the dragon without doing it. That's the whole goal, is I don't want to have to take out the towers for this particular dragon fight. Oh boy, I'm excited. Because this should have the potential of taking out this dragon incredibly fast. Come on, come on. Okay, so I don't even think I have to be near it. I just have to sort of aim at it. Yeah, just aim at it. And down the dragon goes. I should have had the deep learner on me, but perfect. So that's how quickly now I can take out the dragon, where the longest part is just simply waiting for it to spawn in. This is just amazing. If we land a Vorpal like that, it goes down in literally two hits. I, yes, this is why I wanted to make this. It's going to make fighting the dragon over and over again way more bearable. So now the only thing left to do is to, well, craft our all the modium seeds, and then we'll have a sustainable source of seeds, which is going to be very, very nice. Now, this middle section is going to require farmland, so I'm going to be crafting up the magical soil. This is going to, I'm going to need three of them for right now. Later on, we'll be producing more of them, uh, but for right now, Magical soil is how we're going to be able to farm these. So I just place the ingredients over here and those right there. And then that should craft up exactly what we need as we need it, right? That should be it. There we go. And that gets sent over here. <laughs> this is so good. And then this just needs to go underneath our crop. Now I still have to craft my seeds and I do have plenty of all the modium, vibranium and unobtainium to be able to make this. So here we go. Let's make our seeds, and this should be it as far as getting these up and running. Now, I'm probably going to want to make more of these later on, which I'll definitely grind out, uh, but just getting them up and running right now is going to be more than enough. So I don't have to go back out and sort of waste time going out and farming all the modium as needed um, when I could just be working on other projects. Now, this is going to need to go in our crux farm, um, and I'm going to place this on the sides right here. So I'm going to place the soil, I think, that it just gets placed right here, right? Yeah, so it's just like a crux. And then we need to go up and I should be able to place these seeds all on the sides. And that should work. So one here, looks like it's growing. One here and hopefully one here. Okay, so these two are growing. Did I accidentally place the seed in the wrong spot? I probably did. Um, so I, I gotta be careful sometimes because this can happen. Um, uh, what seed did I accidentally place wrong? It's the unobtainium seed. So I don't want to have to remake that seed. So I want to be careful and make sure that I put the unobtainium seed here to make sure that it ends up in here whenever the collector picks it up. Um, and that way it doesn't void it because otherwise it would void it, which would be pretty bad. Um, so we want to make sure we have that prevented there and let's try and put this in this corner. There we go. So now it's on the magical soil and we can see they are all now running. And so all we have to do is go back to that filter, which you're going to probably see a lot. And we just have to go through and make sure we have all of those essences filtered out. Perfect. With all of them filtered out, we should see them build up in here. So there's our first set. Perfect. And uh, we just need to add them into our drawer. And as soon as they are in our drawer list, then we just need to get our diamond upgrades on it and just set it and forget it. So we have now, I think at this point, effectively made ourselves 
Invincible. Um, so we are nearly invincible. We now have a sword that deals a ton of damage and has some really cool effects that we can do later on. And it has this swirly effect on it. Oh, I love this. By the way, you can also add these sort of swirly effects to your character as well, which is a pretty cool thing to have set up. But we'll have to get into that some other day because today we are all out of time. And well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. And well, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to... Nozera, thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Guys, I appreciate it so, so very much for you watching. And, well, be sure to get your world download if you are a supporter. That is one of the best ways to support is via on Discord or just by supporting the channel here on YouTube. I do appreciate you guys very, very much. And, well, with that, I hope you enjoyed. And, as always, thanks for watching.